This is a little video sharing a mechanical issue with a 2004 uh, 200 OptiMax direct fuel injection outboard. I uh, had a little problem. We're up fishing out in the ocean, out the Golden Gate, up the Marin Coast. Experienced a power loss, and uh, while we're up there, fortunately, you know, we had enough power. Had about lost about. 30% so we had maybe 60 or 70% power left so we uh, limped on home um, and and uh, it was kind of scary but we made it got the boat back home threw it on a trailer and uh, brought it home to repair so this is a uh, just a little summary of, of what we found and and uh, hopefully it may help uh, one of you uh, diagnose a problem or or uh, uh, give you some ideas um, in any event, first thing we did was we removed the upper cowl and uh, pretty simple, just three latches comes off. Secondly, we removed the, the lower cowl, which splits in two. There's two 516 bolts in the back, two in the front. There's a little video on how to remove this. Here's the cowls here. They're fairly simple, easy to remove. So watch that video. There's a little plug you got to take off to access one of the, the lower one in the back. And then there's a little metal bracket goes here that this is the front where where all the uh, lines come out, controls, and fuel line come out. So you got to take that off and be careful to remove that and and remove this little uh, sensor here. And it comes right off and it made life much easier to deal with. Uh, on the engine, what we did is we hooked up a water and got the water running, got the uh, started up the motor and what we did is we tested each cylinder listening for a note change while we removed the um, Injector controls so we remove this and listening for a note change uh, hoping to find a, a, a Note change would indicate uh, that that the cylinder was working and uh, Now is no longer working with removal So it's pretty easy just to work through all six cylinders find out where the problem was our problem was here number six uh, where there was no note change when we did remove it. So first thing we did is we swapped coils and tried it again and lo and behold six was still our problem so therefore the coil wasn't a problem. Uh, next what we did was we swapped spark plugs uh, same thing six was still a problem. We then uh, removed the injectors here and here swapped those still uh, no problem. Uh, problem still remained in six, so the injectors were fine. Uh, running out of options, uh, we uh, got a little concerned, so we, we did a pressure test. We we hooked up pressure to the uh, valve here, which is our air uh, pressure, and here, which is our fuel pressure, and we got 80 psi at the air and 90 psi at the fuel, which is exactly what the book says, and with that 10% difference, so everything was fine with our, our air pressure and fuel pressure so um, this wasn't clogged or anything so um, boy we were really worried about it so we did, we did a compression test uh, also on all the cylinders they came out 115 psi which is uh, and they're all fairly consistent which was consistent with the book um, at this point we're scratching our head we had one option left um, I think what happened was we did uh, come up and we removed this upper uh, guard off of the pulleys and the pulley belt and just to look around up there when we ran it when we ran the ran the motor uh, with those the pulley guard off we noticed that the this is the air compressor there's an end cap here with a pulley uh, which which is part of the uh, the belt loop and we noticed that this thing was wobbling and so we remove this element here with these four bolts and remove this element which is called the end cap and it's uh, an eccentric drive which goes down and, and connects into the uh, uh, piston and uh, when we pulled that we noticed that there was a bearing failure of that shaft and there was we found metal parts inside this compressor so immediately you know it's telling us that you know, we probably had some metal, uh, metal, sh metal uh, shavings and failure from the from the co uh, compressor that went into the rail, and probably 
plugged up the direct injector behind here. So, um, so we what we did is we removed, we put everything back together. We we checked this fuel rail and pulled this apart and then swapped the two direct injectors and lo and behold we found that now this cylinder was not working and this was working so the problem was we had a plugged injector direct injector caused by the failure of this fuel pump this is not a good uh uh failure to have although it looks like a real minor little thing this pump is a very common problem apparently this compressor it costs about thirteen hundred dollars just for the part and uh every time it fails you know it throws garbage all the way through the rails so you got to replace this you got to clean all the rails you got to clean all the injectors and any injector that broke then or 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 uh won't be you can't clean out then you have to replace and those these direct injectors are about four hundred dollars and these other injectors here, I didn't price because I didn't have any problem with them. They're like 120 each. So they're not cheap. Um, so we'll clean the VST, we'll clean the rails, we'll take all the direct injectors off, send them out for a cleaning. Um, if that one can't be repaired, I'll have to replace it. It'll cost me 400 bucks. So um, we're in this thing about two grand. Ouch. These things are not cheap to fix over one little cheap bearing. They could have used, it was, it was, it was a round cheap bearing they could have used some some high quality high strength roller bearings or something much better uh but they didn't and um and so i'm not sure why they want 1300 dollars for this 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 air compressor here because it's doesn't look like it's uh, uh too high a quality so um just wanted to share that with you hopefully uh you could use this information um uh and uh, maybe resolve uh, one of your own problems someday, or at least uh, you know, provides me a little history lesson when I look back uh, upon uh, what you know things that happened to me. So, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you hope you guys enjoyed the video.